Hello friends and welcome to my quest for smoothness. Today, I will be making pumpkin seed butter and praline paste. I will show you how I was able to get a super smooth and creamy finish. Similar to my other video of me making pine nut butter and praline paste. Recently, I had gone to Holland and Barrett, which is a superfood health shop selling all kinds of ingredients and I came across in the spread section near the peanut butter, this little guy in the corner. I was naturally very curious and so I bought one jar. This is made with 100% organic roasted pumpkin seeds. Let's open this up. And because it has been in the store shelf, give this a stir due to the separation. I'm going to give this a try. Such an intense flavor due to the roasted notes it gives off. And it has the same kind of characteristics as peanut butter, but without the nut element. It even does the same thing like peanut butter, which is getting stuck to the top part of my mouth. So in the same shop that I bought the jar, I bought myself one kilo of pumpkin seeds to try and replicate this properly. I'm going to roast them in an oven set to 180 degrees Celsius for about eight minutes. I'm going to do them in small batches so that they can roast evenly. Once they have become nice and golden or roasted in color, let them cool down. In order to get the really smooth finish, you will need a wet grinder, similar to the one that I have. I bought this for secondhand from eBay. Here is some advice. Don't feel like you need to invest in brand new equipment in order to create something like this. Let's switch the machine on and now let the wheels do the work. Drop the seeds in one handful at a time. Let that process and then repeat until all of the seeds are in. The stone wheel will crush the seeds. In the middle of the stone wheels is a scraper arm. This will scrape the spinning drum so that the pumpkin seeds can be all crushed evenly. Once all of the pumpkin seeds are in, it will look something like this. We will need to let this keep going for at least three hours because we want it super, super smooth. In the meantime, while waiting, you can check out my other videos. After three hours, let's come back and check on the pumpkin seed butter. I'm pretty happy with the smoothness. Now for a color comparison. On the left is the butter from the shop and on the right is my version. My homemade one is more vibrant in color due to the green skin. Now, like peanut butter, I prefer a little salt in this. I will be using some sea salt. You can either use plain sea salt or you can use some smoked sea salt. I'm going to grind the salt manually to get a finer powder. I would have used my wet grinder, but I still need what I have left behind in the grinder for something else and I didn't want to have the salt element in that. This part is totally optional and up to your taste and preference. Season until you are happy with it. In the end, I did about two pinches of sea salt. Let's have a taste. Boy, is that nice and punchy with a nutty finish. I'm pretty satisfied with this result. Now to do something a little different. I'm going to make pumpkin seed butter butter. I figured since this is rather savory, I think it would be delicious to make this with some bread rolls at the start of your lunch or dinner, rather than just being served plain butter. I have 250 grams of unsalted room temperature butter, and I'm going to mix in 100 grams of homemade pumpkin seed butter. Give that a good whisking. Have a taste. Also, give it a good seasoning. I had to add some more salt due to the fact that I've used unsalted butter. I'm going to place the mixture in a piping bag as I have this little cute quenelle silicone molds. This shape just looks so elegant. This is just going to come out fantastic. Fill each cavity with the butter. Give it a good tap to release any air bubbles. Use a spatula to scrape the surface. This will help keep the surface flat when you demold the pumpkin seed butter later on. 
Place the silicone mold in the freezer. We want it to get hard. I placed mine in for about two hours. After two hours, let's pop out a few. After you place it on a small plate, you can enjoy this in about 30 minutes time. I'm going to use my fine grater to grate some pumpkin seeds to give it a simple finish. There you go. Serve that to your guests. I'm going to go ahead and toast an English muffin. Damn, that spreads like butter. Forgive the pun. Whoa, it's rich, it's creamy, it's full bodied. There's so much flavor in this. I'm never gonna underestimate the power of pumpkin seeds. Now for the other thing. So at the start, I took out 250 grams of pumpkin seed butter from the wet grinder. I'm going to make a wet caramel of 400 grams of caster sugar and just enough water to wet the sugar. Using a small pot, Place the water in first. Bring the pot to the stove and we want the mixture to boil. We are looking for a temperature of between 165 to 175 degrees Celsius. I'm going to use an infrared thermometer to help me with this. You can use a probe thermometer, but that will involve having to wipe it down after. Slowly in stages, the temperature is rising. There we go. It's currently at 167 degrees Celsius and I'm taking it off the heat now. The higher the temperature for a slightly more bitter caramel. If you like your caramels a little bit bitter, you can go around the 170 to 175 mark. Don't forget, caramel will still continue cooking. Cool the caramel in some baking paper and a baking tray. Be careful when you're spreading this as it is super hot. And just look at that nice amber color. Give it some time to allow it to cool and harden. With the help of my camera light, I want to show you the opacity of it. This is what I call perfect caramel, or in my case, perfect for what I need it for. Once it has cooled down, break it up into manageable pieces. Run the wet grinder and drop the pieces in slowly. Let it process and repeat. In this rare occasion, Jessica has decided to join me in the kitchen. I let my lovely assistant do all the work. It is rather mesmerizing watching the wet grinder spin and destroy the caramel. Now, because this is a sweet version, I'm going to complement it with some vanilla bean paste. This one is also to your preference. Adjust it at your will, but don't add too much because we don't want to overpower the pumpkin seed flavor. And like before, let that go for about three hours. Once everything has been mixed, now we can take the machine apart, scrape everything. This next part is totally optional and only if you want to put in the effort. I have a nut milking bag or a muslin cloth. It's basically a fine mesh. Pour the content in and with some gloves, squeeze and massage the bag. If you think that was super smooth already, using a nut bag is just having some insurance to really ensure it is super smooth. Let's check the content of the nut bag. It feels smooth, but extra thick. This is what gives the pumpkin seed praline its body. If you don't mind it, you don't have to get rid of this part. Some people like their butters chunky and some people like it smooth. Well, there you have it for today. Pumpkin seed butter, comma, pumpkin seed butter butter and praline paste. Enjoy however you want. Have it with some toast 
pancake, waffles? In fact, the other night, I had the pumpkin seed butter, but not the butter version, just the regular version with some avocado toast, and that was super next level because I enjoy avocados with seeds like sunflowers and pumpkin seeds. So this just made it extra powerful. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment, and let me know if this is something you would try. In the meantime, it was good seeing you, and bye for now.